Hey guys, okay, we're just getting started. If you let me know who is on, we'll get started in a second here. Let me send out. Oh, hey, so you're watching Brooks, that's funny. Okay, so I'm gonna send out email reminder saying we're live really fast it's hard to get everybody on the same because everybody's on different time zones it's hard to pick a time that works for everybody hopefully this works for people let's see we are live we can What that? We'll get started in a second here, I promise. Welcome, overeating. Entire list. Hey, girl, how are you? Alicia. I was just sending out a thing saying we are live. What are you guys up to today? How was your weekend? Check out, you'll have to comment because I can't hear you. <laughs> Check out, um, I'm trying to do the little thing real fast to let people know we're live. Three, four, um, and then we'll get started. Okay. We're eating. All right, two more seconds. I'm gonna do We Are Live. I hope you guys are having a good day. Alicia, how was your weekend? Uh, copy, paste, include, next. Okay. Well, oh well, that's not working. Oh well. Okay, so we're just gonna get started and then people can trickle on. That's fine because I want to be mindful of your time. So today is the day that we're gonna talk about cravings. And the thing about um overeating is there are a lot of things that influence um, our ability to eat mindfully and eat foods that nourish our body. And, oh, I forgot to introduce myself, huh? So, <laughs> um, for those that are gonna be watching that don't know me very well, my name is Sarah Schneider, I'm a holistic nutritionist. I've got a degree in dietetics and institutional administration. And um, I work mostly with mamas who want to heal their bodies, um, lose weight and really work on their mindset so that they can get really clear on what it is that is holding them back from that health centered life that they want so that they can, um, you know, live a really health centered life that, that, um, they've always wanted to show up as their best self. So that's what I do. Um, and like I said, today we're going to talk about cravings and what that means. So, um, a lot of you know that I struggle with my weight for, you know, a large portion of my life. And it's one of those things that um, is really near and dear to my heart. So if you guys like pop on, just let me know you're here. I'll try and keep up with the comments. Um, but yeah, so overeating was something that I really struggled with when I had a weight problem. And um, specifically, Cravings is one of those things that that was really hard on me, and I know that it's hard on other people. So um, today, when we talk, when I use the word craving, I want to be really clear on what that is. So when I say craving, um, I'm not meaning like I woke up and it was chilly outside, which it actually is today in Texas. 
Um, and you know, soup sounded good, right? I'm talking about like that craving that when you are in it, it feels like this, you know, internal pool, like you just can't live without it. Um, it is all consuming, it's intense, and it's usually a certain food. So like for me, it would have been um, something like Taco Bell or cheese <laughs> enchiladas or something like that. For somebody else, it may be, you know, cupcake, ice cream, whatever it is. Typically, it's something that is um, carby or sugary that, or something that turns to carbs, okay? So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about cravings. Um, so there are different biological reasons why we crave certain foods. And when we have those cravings, we end up over consuming them. And so I was going to go over a few of those biological reasons so that you can kind of understand what it is behind those cravings. And then we'll go into, um, mindset and we'll discover exactly why you personally are struggling with this. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be good stuff. So hang in there. Leptin. Um, I wrote a post on leptin the other day and it got a lot of activity. And I think it's because people just hadn't heard of it. But leptin is your um, hormone that stimulates your appetite. Okay. And surges of leptin will tell you that you are hungry. Sometimes you have a leptin surge that will tell you you're, you're hungry when you're not actually hungry. And this happens when we eat sugar or things that turn to sugar. So sugar is one of those foods that triggers the release of leptin. And that is why when we eat a little bit of sugar, it stimulates your body to crave more. And when we're craving more, we're eating more and typically over consuming. So we're overeating. And so that is one of those things that just kind of happens. So leptin is one. Two is serotonin. So if you know serotonin, you probably know it as like the feel-good hormone in the brain. Um, it's a neurotransmitter, and 10% is produced in the brain, and it stays there. The other 90% is produced in the gut. And so you have your, you know, um, head brain, and then you have your gut brain. And your gut brain um, is when your mind and your body are connected, right? So when you're not feeling well or you're feeling upset, or things are just not going well, and you find yourself wanting to crave sugar or refined carbs, it's because your body's like craving that serotonin. It wants to feel better. And feeling better is not going to have you like um, going for broccoli, right? <laughs> um, it needs a quick fix. It needs, you know, really quick, high, um, um, energy. So it's going to want carbs, sugar, anything that will release that serotonin to make your body feel better. So it reaches for the quick fix. Um, and then your body feels good and you keep feeding your body and that feeling just keeps going, right? So that's one of them. So we have leptin, we have serotonin, and then we have sugar addiction. Um, there are studies, and this is incredible, that show that sugar is a more intense reward, meaning it is um, more addictive than cocaine. The MRIs will show, like, here's the cocaine, here's the sugar, and more activity within the brain lights up when we're talking long sugar. So that's something that's really incredible um, when you think about when your body is craving sugar, how, how it's hard to, to not give in to that. Um, and then when you add, this is what food formulators do. When you add sugar, salt, and fat, it's like the holy trinity of cravings because your body is actual, those, those three elements together make for a huge, strong connection, a huge, strong pull to those foods. So formulation spent millions of dollars trying to get that exact formula right, the exact amount of fat, um, sugar, and salt in a product to make you want it more. Um, so think like buttery popcorn at the movies. Um, the actual corn is what turns to sugar, and then you have like the salt and the butter, and it's super craving, right? It makes you want to crave it. And then you have like gut health. So you hear a lot about gut health and how it's important to have healthy gut health. Um, and 
in the gut microbiome, which is just like the environment within your gut, you have bad bacteria and you have good bacteria. And the thing about it is bad bacteria craves, feeds off of um, foods that are not good for you. And good bacteria feeds on foods that are good for you. So sometimes your bad bacteria in your gut, if you have like a, a, um, a, a bad mix, um, that bad bacteria will actually cause you to crave foods that are not good for you. And it keeps saying, hey, I want more, I want more, I want more. So it causes you to crave and overeat those foods. And then we have like emotional triggers, of course. Um, and we'll get into that. That's like a whole day's worth ne in the next few days. But, you know, when you're feeling frustrated or overwhelmed or sad or disappointed or whatever it is, um, for me, it's exhausted or, or worn out. When I'm feeling worn out, I'm, that's when I start knowing that I want something, right? Um, so we'll talk about that in the upcoming days. So that's the science. That's the sciencey stuff. But hold on, I just see something. You have all the ones I just talked about. I know. See, here's the thing. We all have it to some extent, right? Um, and every single thing that I have said is because I know this personally, not just because I have a degree in this and like I studied this for the last 15 years, but it's also because I've lived this. So yeah, I, I totally feel you, Alicia. So the problem with the science, and it's not a problem, it's just it doesn't reveal the why. So a lot of times we go to the doctor and the doctor will give us medication or, you know, tell us what the problem is, but we don't know the root cause. And so that's, that's the problem. That's the disconnect. And, and that's what we want to do today. We want to figure out why um, we actually follow through on these cravings, right? So um, today I wanted to go through some prompts and we'll just do this together. So if you have, I, I know I put it in the, um, the email, but if you can get a piece of paper and a pen handy, we're going to do this together. And um, you can just write in the little blank or write in the comments what you come up with. Um, here, I have my prompt right here. So I want you to pick the last time that you experienced one of these cravings and you gave in to them. So not only that you like experience these cravings, but you actually like follow through on it. Um, and I want you to describe the experience. What did you crave? Um, when, where, what, what was going on in your life? Just all the facts surrounding um, your experience with this craving. And um, I'll give you a little bit of time to work that out or to, to write all that out. And then we'll, we'll get back on here. I mean, we're going to stay on here. But then um, you can comment and let me know kind of what bubbled up for you. And then we're going to use that for the next prompt. So I'll be quiet for a little bit. Um, and for the purposes of this, let's do an unhealthy craving. Like, let's not do, hey, I think I was running a little low on iron, so I was craving a steak. Like, that's not um, as helpful for this exercise. So I'm going to comment here. So if someone pops on, they can do the prompt one. Prompt one. There you go. You're going to pick the last time you experienced and gave into a craving. So just take the time to write it out. Um, you know, I think I'm going to write out the last time I did too. So I can kind of, I can share as well. And if you have a question, like if, if it's hard for it to kind of come up for you, let me know.
what you guys um what you guys have something let me know like put it in the comments if you if you want to share it Oh, there we go. Last night, craving sugar but not wanting to go all out with chocolate rice from Cecil and animal crackers and milk. All the while watching a movie. Yeah, okay. So Stella... We're going to move into the next prompt in a second here, but I would start asking, like, um, why you wanted to settle on something else. Like, what made you want to settle on something else? Fast food, specifically French fries. Most days last week, last time. Was Saturday afternoon. I've been super stressed about work, money, relationships, issues. Heading to my second job, I stopped at Wendy's. I used to do that a lot. <laughs> we can't hear Brooks. Don't worry if he's screaming. <laughs> Brooks is still his grandson. Yeah, Alicia, that that was a really big win for me too. When work got really stressful, I was like sitting in my office looking up what kind of fast food I could. To make me feel a little bit better. So if you're just popping on, prompt one is up there. It's basically pick the last time you experienced and gave into a craving and describe that experience. What did you crave? When, where, what? All that kind of good stuff. And then um, let me get prompt two up there now that we've come to a good spot. Okay. So now that you have all the facts like about the experience and like the craving and all that, I want you to consider the quality of my diet goes down as my stress level goes up. Yeah, no, seriously, it really does for a lot of people. Like you are not, you are not the only one that happens all the time. Um, and it's, some of it is self care. Some of it is, um, you know, patterns food patterns that we have for ourselves. There's a lot of things. So prompt two is, I want you guys to think about the experience that was leading up to it. So Alicia, you kind of, um, you kind of started it. Like last time was Saturday afternoon, you were super stressed out, work, everything was kind of piling up. So you kind of started going that route. But um, I really want all of you guys to think back to the experience that was leading up to the craving. So how are you feeling physically, emotionally, um, it could be positive feelings, it could be negative feelings, and people crave foods when they celebrate. There's all kinds of <laughs> times that we do that. Um, and I want you to think about how you felt at the beginning, like at the very, very beginning, before you ate the food, in the middle, and then at the end. I want you to write this down. What bubbles up for you? So here's prompt two. And if you guys are doing this on the replay, because it's hard to like find a time when everybody can do this with all the different time zones. Um, I have different times each day. Tomorrow I think it's at nine. Um, you can do this too, so now that you have the prompts. But think back to the experience leading up to the craving. Um, I want you to write down how you felt physically and emotionally before, middle, and after uh, the craving. And then we'll talk about what bubbles up for you.
And then just let me know when you guys, if you guys get caught up on something or if you are finished. Yeah, Alicia, before is tired, stressed, sad, frustrated. During it was a little numb. And then after guilty and blah. Hey Alicia, for you, um Guilt is a big one afterwards. So for you, I would say, why, what made you feel guilty? What, what did you, what felt guilty about it? Giving in? Or, I mean, there's like different reasons why, but I would say like, why, why would you feel guilty? And if you're just hopping on, I know there's people like coming in and off. I'm trying to be quiet because they're writing, but um, <laughs> Prompt two is right there. You can read it and you can catch up. Because I know eating unhealthy food isn't going to make anything better, it actually makes it worse. Yeah, you don't have to catch the replay. You can do it right now if you wanted to, Elena. The prompts are on there. The prompt is right there. It's basically we're just writing down like um, the last time we had a food craving and we described our experience and now we're writing like how we felt physically and emotionally before, middle, and after. Um, and we're going to corn chips and pineapple salsa with lunch. It's lunch time. I'm hungry. You need to do something fast. But were you craving it, Jen? Were you like really craving it? Okay, you'll do it. Perfect. Okay, you can catch up. So here's, here's all I'm going to give you guys before we go into prompt three. I'm gonna give you guys just like a little like insight into mine. So I don't get food cravings very often anymore. I just I just don't. Um, but the last few weeks has been really really stressful for me, just personally and with my kids. And there's a lot going on right now. And we went out to the Mexican food restaurant. And um, of course, like the one thing that I always want when I'm not feeling so hot, like when things are not going right, is the cheese enchilada. So. Um, I know that I can't eat a cheese enchilada like it makes me physically ill But that's the one thing that I really want. It's like a craving for me So I ended up eating the whole enchilada no pun intended and um, It was because I was super stressed. I was super overwhelmed and to some people it's like hey you only ate an enchilada, but for me that's kind of a big deal and because um this is what I do for a living. And we still have those moments. Even when you're on the other side, you will have like one of those teeny tiny moments where <clears throat> you give in a little bit um, and then you get right back on track. But for me, it's when I'm like super stressed, I was super overwhelmed, like there was so much going on. I just, I couldn't handle it all. And um, I knew even if I ate it, I was going to be really, you know, ill. And afterwards, I was kind of like, you, Alicia, like, why did I just do that? <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> you know, it actually made me feel worse. All of those kind of things come into play. And so that's when you start asking yourself, like, um, you know, why? Why did I feel like I needed to do that? You know, you know, um, you know, why? Why did I feel guilty? All of those questions you start asking and digging deeper and deeper and deeper until you can get to that root cause of why. So if there's anything that you can do, it's just asking like why, 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 why until you get to that root cause. All of a sudden there's like a ton of little like things going through. Okay, so um, I don't know if that was like meant to be right then or not. <laughs> That's funny. So Jen, 
let me know if that was um, an actual craving or if it was just something that you weren't quite sure. I mean, you just ate it because like it was there and you were busy. Okay, so prompt three. So here's the deal. What if you didn't give in to that craving? What if um, you didn't, like you were sitting there and the craving was happening and you didn't give in to it? What feelings or thoughts would bubble up for you? I'll copy and paste that one. It's prompt three. This is kind of a big one for me. I'm not going to lie. I'll be quiet though so you guys can type. I mean, you guys can write. Let me know if you have a question. I like it when it made me feel better if I ate it. Yeah. I still beat myself up in the times that I don't give in for thinking. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Like, I didn't even do it, and I'm still upset that I was even thinking about possibly doing it. Alicia, girl, I feel you. So for that, Alicia, I would really start thinking like, or it's not thinking, but like writing it down. I overthink everything. Yeah, I know. Welcome to my world too. So I would start um, going a little bit deeper. So um, why am I, why am I giving myself a hard time for even thinking about it? Like, wait where's that disconnect because like clearly you could be celebrating the progress that you made right like the progress is that you had a craving you sat there you let it pass you didn't you know involve yourself with it and you still um didn't feel like that was enough so like i feel like that's some enoughness stuff um i always talk about that enoughness but i don't think that's a word so i would i would dive deep into that um stephanie i'm coming on late so we'll have to replay later i do know for me sometimes i will give in because of what's going on around me i eat something unhealthy because i can't think of something healthier to eat okay <clears throat> and for you i would think about like what is skewing that um ability to think about other options like 
when you say like there, I don't know anything else to eat. There's only one option. It's because like you're zoned into that one option. So I would think about like what's going on emotionally um, that has you kind of like zeroed in. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Enough is the source of most of my problems. Enough is the source of most people's problems, <laughs> not just yours. Like it's everybody. Everybody, I think, comes it comes down to like not enough. Like I just wrote something today. You know, I'm a healthy weight. And if I would have looked at that a few years ago, I would have still thought that wasn't enough. Um, it takes a lot of head and heart work. And I know you're doing it, Alicia. Like I know you from other groups. I know you're doing it. So for me, um, when I look at what thoughts kind of like bubble up or what feelings bubble up, if, uh, you know, I didn't give into that craving, I would almost feel a little bit left out, right? Like I earned that. I eat healthy so much, you know, it wouldn't hurt for me to be able to eat that once in a while. Like I earned it. I deserved it. And so for something like that, you would really have to look into like the questions that I ask myself is like, okay, so why do you feel like you need to earn it? Right? Like, why do you feel like you need to earn the food? Like you are intrinsically um, deserving, right? So why do you feel like you have to earn it? Great idea in writing it out. Need ideas for snacks, healthy snacks that won't curtail this journey. Yeah, Stella. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, so this is a great thing to, to come out. Healthy snacks that won't curtail this journey. You know what? I'm going to, um, I'm just thinking. So you're going to get an email. If you're on the email list, if you're not on the email list, um, let me know and we'll get you on it. I'm going to send out an email later on today and it's going to have all of the nutrition recommendations for helping um, curb cravings. So that'll help too. But this is like all the mindset issues. So I will try just because Del and Stephanie both asked, I will put on a list of some healthy snacks. But the, the, the thing about this one is it's not necessarily having an alternative. It's about being able to address why being able to address the actual core issues of why you are falling into that craving, right? Why you're out, like that pool is there and why you're attaching yourself to that pool. Does that make sense, guys? I hope that makes sense. And I know most of you are ladies, but I always say guys, cause I don't know. So that would be the, that would be the question that I would be asking yourself is the why, 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 why? Stephanie, I think you are on the list. I'll double check for you, but I'm pretty sure you're on the list. Um, if you filled out the, the, um, your name and email and you clicked the opt-in thing, you should be on the list. Part of my issue is I am a therapist. I teach others how to have healthier habits and lead emotionally healthier lives. So when I don't manage to do that myself, I feel like I failure at basically everything in my life. Yeah, that's tough. You know, I think there's a lot of truth in that because this is what I do for a living. So I put more pressure on myself um, to, to do everything right. And, um, that's that all or nothing thinking that kind of comes back to, to bite us, right? It's that all or nothing. I'm either great at what I do. I'm either, you know, doing really, really well, or I'm a failure. <laughs> and, and obviously that, that thinking isn't fair to you. Um, so I would look at that. I would look at that a lot. I would look at why I know I have issues. No, you don't. We all have issues, right? Um, I feel like I feel like basically everything in my life. Yeah, I would look at that. Why? Why do you feel like a failure? And I would literally answer that question for yourself, Alicia. Why do I feel like a failure? Because somewhere, somewhere along the way, you felt like that. Because this is okay. So this is what I want. For you guys I want you guys to get to the point where you will have that one little like hiccup and you won't feel bad for it you're gonna have you know some things that like happen where you give into like a craving and it doesn't derail all of your progress simply because you were human and I don't even want it like 
I don't even want you to think like I'm a human and I made a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's just you're a human being and um, you experience something and then you move forward into something that was a little bit more healthy. There are times when we do things that aren't so nourishing and then there are times that we do things that are very nourishing. Um, so it's one of those things where we just have to really give ourselves grace. Um, so that it doesn't derail our progress. Because if we don't allow ourselves a little bit of grace on those times when we feel like we did something that wasn't as nourishing, it can totally spin you down in a cycle where you're not able to catch back up, right? You're not able to actually um, feel okay about it. And then you're like, well, you know what? I already messed this up, so I'm just going to go to Burger King or I'm going to go to Wendy's and I'm going to get those fries or I'm going to go to Dairy Queen and I'm going to get that shake because I, you know what, I can't do this whole healthy eating thing. And it was over something so small. So that's where I want you guys to get to. I want you guys to get to the point where one little teeny tiny thing isn't going to completely derail all your progress. Um, it doesn't send you into like that downward spiral. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay. Um, and Stella and Stephanie, I am going to include a few snack ideas on the um, email that I send out later. But that's with <laughs> that is with the condition that you guys look through some of this stuff, even if you didn't get through it today right now, so that we know exactly why we're craving certain foods. Okay. Um, and then number four, this is the last prompt of today. Um, I want you to go back and I want you to identify an emotion that you felt when you were having the craving. So, um, like, Alicia, I'm not going to call you out, but you keep, you're a little bit more vocal. Yours were, and you had it, like, all written down nicely. So, like, let's say an emotion, you were stressed or whatever. Um, who else had an emotion that they put on here? I'm looking through some of these. No names. Okay. Um, so go back and identify an emotion that you felt when you were having the craving. For example, if you're like, if you're stressed, um, what were you seeking to eliminate that feeling? What did you, you can call me hell if I would that. Got it. Why? Stella, you have to, I don't know. I don't know why you're saying why. Can you elaborate? And I'll answer it. So I want you to go back and identify the emotion that you were feeling when you were having that craving. So one of the emotions, just pick one, because most of the time we're having like 10, right? Um, so for example, if you were stressed out, what were you seeking to eliminate that feeling? Like, what did you want? Did you want comfort? Did you want relaxation? Did you want peace, relief? Um, did you want soothing? Did you want, what did you want? Um, and then, like, let's say you were having a positive feeling, stress, tired, hungry, feeling foggy, not all emotions, but that's what I was feeling. Yeah. So, Elena, you're like, you and Alicia have very similar um, takes on it. So, even if you're, you know, like, excited, like, if you're going into that emotion or going into that, yeah, craving and you're excited. So, sometimes, like, we use food to, like, celebrate or we wanted an award or we wanted to reward ourselves. We need to find out why we are making the choices we're making. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we have to find out why. So that's why we can, we're doing as much as we can here, but you may want to go back tonight and really look at this. Um, so I want you to go back and I'll be quiet, I promise. Go back and identify an emotion um, when you were craving and write out what were you seeking to eliminate that feeling like what did you want what did you want to eliminate and what did you want to happen
Yeah, Alicia, I wanted to feel calm and in control. I often feel like food is the only thing in my life that I can control. So girl, you already know this, like you're the therapist. <laughs> so why? Why do you feel out of control? What feels out of control? I wanted to stop feeling stress. I wanted to feel calm and in control. Again, yeah. So, and ironically, it makes me feel out of control. It totally doesn't work. I know. And so that's why, <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? So it's like you, you're wanting to be in control, but while you're doing it, you feel completely out of control. What the, it's like complete irony right there. So yeah, I would start asking myself. I was cooking, taking care of the kids and they were yelling at me. <laughs> Story of my life, right? Um, so yeah, how would you feel if you didn't give into it? Does that feel scary to you? Does that feel out of control to you? Like if you were sitting there and you had this craving, so this is for everybody really, say prompt five, if you were sitting there, you had this feeling, the kids are screaming, you're cooking, um, you're feeling pulled in all these different directions, and you, and then you start having this craving for something, um, how would it feel not to give into it? I just want time for myself. When they are home, yes, don't we all? <laughs> Not giving in would feel like actual control, like I'm in charge of my cravings and my emotions. Yeah. So, Alicia, what would you need to do? Stella, I'd be hungry. Would you really be hungry, Stella? And I ask this only because, like, typically cravings aren't because of hunger. Typically, we're, we're craving things when we're not really hungry. We just, like, really want to eat something specific. Not giving in would feel amazing. I need to not give in, duh. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, that's the goal is not to give in. But what would need to happen for you not to give in? Does that make sense? Something would have to change for you not to be able to give in. And I would explore for all of you who are talking about how, like, you know, I want to be in charge. I want to feel more in control of my cravings and my emotions. I would spend some time about how, why you feel you know, like you don't have control. Like what parts of your life do you feel like you don't have control on? Um, why do you feel like you're not in control? That kind of thing. What's some of those, that history about not being in control? There's a, there's something there. Staying in the kitchen is my downfall. I need to leave the kitchen, meditate for a few minutes and regroup. Yeah, sometimes it's just stepping away from that situation, especially if it's the kids that are like screaming at you and you have stuff on the stove and you have all this stuff going on. It's just like taking a big deep breath, um, you know, in another room and then coming back and being able to like, all right, let's game on again, right? Um, I need a better way to relieve stress and do something that feels like a conscious choice. Yeah. So some of it is, is stress. Some of it is a self-care thing. Um, sometimes if we can substitute self-care for whatever, you know, craving that can be, that can actually get us through that moment. Um, and here's the thing. This is what I find really interesting. If you haven't explored this, and this is something you can do when you get home or next time you're having a craving, is every single time we're having a craving, um, there's some sort of like emotion that's like linked to it, right? But different foods can have a different association with you. So like when you're super stressed out, it may be um, like you want a cookie <laughs> or 
maybe if you're super stressed out, you really want that cheeseburger and fries. Or maybe when you're really sad, you want a cookie. Um, and looking back at that, be like, you know, why do I need this? Why do I need, you know, a cookie to make me happy? And you start writing out, you know, maybe there was a history of that. Maybe every time your, um, you know, your parents saw that you were sad, they wanted to cheer you up and take you to the ice cream shop, things like that. This programs you. And it makes you crave certain foods all based on a habit, all based on history, all based on messaging. So it may be something like that. But it, it, the goal is to just keep writing why, 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 why until you get to like exactly what it is. Um, Stella, go for a walk, call a friend, finding an alternative to get my mind off the cravings, so actually being in control. Yeah. Going for a walk is a really good one because it actually produces um, – the good hormones in your body, like the good, the feel good hormones. And it, you know, pumps a little bit of adrenaline. It's actually a really, really good one. If you can actually move your body, um, that can get you through that craving, um, so that you actually are in control. Right. So, so that's the prompts that we have today. Um, Here's a question, though, for you guys. Do any of you celebrate with food? Do any of you have, like, happy, positive emotions that have you connected to a craving? I'm more curious than anything because so many times we talk about negative emotions and cravings, but I was wondering if any of you have, like, those positive emotions. Like, mine was always reward and deserve. Those were the two things that fueled my cravings. So I was wondering if any of you have the same. No, I do all my strong emotions have food cravings. Yes, see that was me, Alicia. Every single like big feeling I had, no matter if it was like excitement or if it was happiness is pasta, yes it is. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, my family's Italian, we're Sicilian, and that is so me, like happiness is pasta. <laughs> Not really for me. It's always been negative. Yeah, Alina, that's so. Most people, it's the associations, but every once in a while, like people like me, it's like deserve and earn and happiness, celebrating. Like if I got, you know, a promotion at work, I'm like, we're going to the steakhouse, guys. You know what I mean? We're getting crab mac and cheese. Like it was always big emotions. Um, Sarah, thank you. I was driving while eating Burger King. <laughs> he said Burger King at <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sarah, <coughs> for calling you out. I had no idea. It must have been the universe. That's hilarious. I can't believe you threw it out, though. That's hilarious. Doesn't everyone celebrate with food? Stella, you would not. It, it's funny that you say that because there are people that don't. But, like, my culture, yes, always, right? That's hilarious there. That made me laugh so hard. I totally accidentally called you out. And you know what's funny? We don't even really have very things here. And I was surprised that actually came out of my mouth. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so tomorrow is day two. We're going to talk about indulgences. Um and pleasure. So that's a really fun one. And a fun one. It is. But it's a really fun one. No, that was good. I don't need it. it. I wasn't even hungry. Well, I'm glad that served you. So day two is all about indulgences. And we're going to, you know, go into that. I think tomorrow's schedule, all of our holidays and get gatherings revolve around food. Yeah. Yeah. My family's Sicilian. I totally get that. Um... In fact, when I was giving my grandfather's, um, I guess, eulogy at his funeral, I was speaking, and it all came down to, like, all of the different foods. My sister and I were laughing because as we're writing it, it was, like, all food-based. It was like we were giving, like, a food review. Um, okay, so day two is indulgences. We're going to go over that tomorrow. I think it's at 9 a.m. tomorrow, 9 a.m. Central. So I hope people can get on to that. I know it's a weird time. But I've got a lot going on tomorrow. 
Um, and then today I'm going to send you, if you're on the VIP list, if you're on, if you signed up with your email address and you opted in, I'm going to send you the nutrition bonus. I'm going to send that at five o'clock today. So if you're not on that list, I'm going to include the link in here and you can go ahead and fill it out. And if you fill it out before five, I'll send it to you, but it's going to have all of the nutrition bonuses and what you can do to help curb cravings because the body and the mind are connected, right? So things that we nourish our bodies with will help us limit the amount of foods that we're going to crave. Um, so I'm going to send you all that. And then because Stella and who else was asking me about it? Oh, Stephanie. No, is it Stephanie? Or was it um, Jen? Anyway, somebody else asked me about the snacks. I'll send you a few things that I can put on there um, that'll help, you know, give you something to, to go to if that's something that you need. Is there anything else? Do you guys have anything else before we get off today? I hope you guys have a great day. No? Okay. Well, you guys have a fantastic day. If you're watching the replay, um, I hope you have a nice evening. On another note, please send a pic of the tea you drink. It's having a hard time finding. Okay, Stella. Stella's one of my clients. Um, I told you that it was at Kroger's, and it was at Kroger's. And then I went this weekend to pick some up, and it wasn't there. But I know it's still at Sprouts. So I will send you the picture of that. Because I was standing in Kroger's with my mother-in-law, and I said, I need to snap this pic to send to one of my clients. And I was like, where is it? So, Stella, yes, I will get that to you as soon as possible. I'm sorry about that. That was really funny. But yes, the tea that I drink for everybody else, um, it helps flush the liver, and it also helps curb cravings. Um, it's from traditional medicinals. I don't know if you can see that. And it's the roasted um, organic dandelion tea, and it really helps with cravings. So if you, especially if you have sugar addiction or if you have um, sugar issues, like you're really like strong pull for cravings, um, you can try the roasted organic dandelion tea. Now, if you've never had it before, it's a little bit better and it's kind of an acquired taste. So just warning you, that may not be your cup of tea. No pun intended. All right, you guys have a great day. Stella, I'm gonna send you that picture. And if there's anything else you guys need, just PM me. Bye guys.